Hello, I'm Dr. Eric Walden, uh, Program Director of Music Therapy at University of the Pacific in Stockton and San Francisco, California. I'm talking to you today about MASA R, the Music Attendance Screening Assessment Revised. The gap in clinical practice that MASA R uh, addressed came out of some clinical questions um, that we had in some of our research and clinical work working in pediatric medical setting. Um, and a lot of this has to do with um, using music during procedural support uh, interventions. So what led up to the development of MASA R? So we know that attention plays a role in mitigating distress during invasive procedures. Uh, we have, that's established in the research literature already, particularly in the pediatric psychology um, and the, uh, the neurology literature. Music as alternate engagement, or MAE, does require a level of auditory attention on the part of the patient during procedural support. So therefore, um, it would seem important to assess a child's ability to attend to um, auditory stimuli, um, more specifically uh, assessing the child's ability to attend to musical uh, stimuli. So the assessment question addressed by uh, Massa R um, is, to what extent can a child attend to discrete musical stimuli? Massa R was developed um, at University of the Pacific. The project lead was Dr. David Wolf um, and, uh, and me. Uh, and then we had several music therapists, graduate level music therapists who were involved in doing some of the, the field testing. I will point out that while Massa R has been used clinically, the research that has been done has only been uh, done with a non-clinical uh, population. So Massa R itself is intended to be uh, used with children who've been hospitalized between the ages of four and seven years. Um, the tool itself is administered at the point of admission to the pediatric hospital. So for those of you that may have viewed the KIMPAC um, video as well, um, we will see KIMPAC and Massa R being uh, administered as kind of a package. Um, it's a prescriptive assessment tool, meaning that Massa R is administered at the beginning of treatment, um, so it can inform um, inform any treatment planning that goes on while the child is admitted to the hospital. Um, and as with any assessment tool, it should be used in combination with reviews of records, clinical interviewing, and other observations. So what I'm saying is that a clinical test or measure should never be used in isolation. Um, you need to always consider the context. To, to administer Massa R, um, you need the master, uh, Massa R protocol, um, which involves uh, a binder with some uh, with instructions for administration, but as well as some visual aids that are used. Um, it requires a music player, a portable music player with some well-fitting headphones. Um, there's a recording sheet uh, that I will show you in just a moment, and it takes about 10 minutes to administer the Massa R2 items. So for Massa item number one, it uses the popular song C is for Cookie, and you can see here in the short video that we'll watch um, that the child is tasked with listening to Cookie Monster sing a song about cookies. And every time Cookie Monster says or sings the word cookie, the child is directed to point um, to point at the uh, the cookie that is on on the um, uh, that's on the uh, the, on the visual aid there. So we'll watch a very short video. This is a non-clinical video um, of um, what the field testing looked like. So you can get a feel for, for what's happening here. We're really seeing whether or not the child is able to attend and respond to um, the, uh, the, the auditory cue. The next item, uh, Massa R, 
Um, item number two uh, uses the popular song, A Whole New World. And so um, as opposed to item number one, item one asked for a single discrete auditory target. Um, in Massa, uh, I, Massa R item number two, the child is tasked with touching the picture of the singer of the song. So whenever there's a change in the vocalist, uh, the child is asked to either point to a picture of Aladdin, um, the male vocalist, or Jasmine, the, uh, the female vocalist. Or if you hear both of them singing at the same time, the child is directed to point to both of them. Okay, um, so this is a little bit more sophisticated uh, type of attention, but we want to, again, look at the extent to which they, a child can attend to a, um, a musical cue. So again, we'll watch a short video. So you can get an idea of what the administration uh, itself looks like. So the clinical data um, are uh, raw scores that are produced, uh, which represent the extent to which a child can attend to the musical stimuli. Um, and then the music therapist will use these data in addition to other sources of clinical information to determine the best type of interventions for procedural support. So if a child really struggles with auditory attention, um, musical attention in this situation, then maybe finding procedural support interventions that don't that do not rely as much on uh, on attention uh, might be might be uh, more appropriate. If you're looking at the record sheet here, this is what the music therapist is using while they're administering the tool. Um, I have a blow up here. So the the lyrics uh, for the songs that are used um, in the uh, the assessment. Um, are all listed, um, and the music therapist simply puts a check mark um, whenever the child uh, touches the uh, the stimulus material. In this case, every time they uh, they touch uh, cookie, um, and after they make those little check marks, and they go back, and then they score um, whether or not um, they they met that uh, that particular uh, target. And there are instructions uh, on how to administer. Uh, the tool itself on how to do the scoring. We did run two studies on uh, the psychometrics. We we ran a, an initial study on the first version of MASA, uh, which is the one that was published in 2009, um, uh, to establish um, uh, the presence of reliability and the presence of validity, um, specifically with regard to validity uh, we wanted to see whether or not our tool assesses um, or measures a construct that's very similar to auditory attention. Auditory attention is often what is assessed in, um, in the pediatric psychology literature looking at procedural support and attention and distraction. Um, so we wanted to see the extent to which our, um, our tool, MASA, also measured auditory attention. Um, so we had to administer uh, MASA along with um, a, a subtest from the NEPSI, the Neuro, uh, Neuropsychological Assessment Battery for Children. Um, and uh, we wanted to see whether or not the, there was um, convergent validity evidence um, between the two. Um, I'm also a, a, a clinical psychologist in California. And so therefore I do have access to, um, to these, uh, these other uh, neuropsychological measures um, as well. Um, so that's what one of the things that enabled this research to be done. We also established, um, we, wanted to, we wanted to explore the reliability uh, of the tool. Um, and so with regard to reliability, it was important that we establish um, uh, stability of the measurement. So test retest reliability. If a music therapist administers this tool upon a child's admission, um, we would like to know whether or not our measurement is stably 
or consistently measuring a the same construct over a period of time so that the music therapist can can know whether or not um, this particular trait that we're measuring, which is music attentiveness, um, is it stable uh, over a child's entire admission? So we did um, we did explore uh, the stability test retest reliability. Um, it was mixed. Um, the test retest reliability was much higher for item one than it was for item two on Massa, um, and they were the same items. C is for cookie, and also uh, the whole new world. Um, and then it was also important to establish or explore the inner observer agreement um, because a, a computer is not uh, is not recording whether or not a child is attending to the the musical stimuli. Um, it's a it's a music therapist actually writing on the record sheet. So um, it was important to establish whether or not the observation system that we developed um, is something that is consistently uh, measuring. We also found that the inner observer agreement was also mixed um, between the two items. Again, much the inner uh, estimates of reliability were much higher for item number one, C is for cookie, compared to item number two, which was uh, a whole new world. Um, as far as construct validity, um, the there was a fair uh, a fair amount of um, consistency present that we detected between what massa r or sorry massa was uh, was measuring with um, with the auditory attention subtest it wasn't perfect and it shouldn't be perfect because they're looking at auditory attention and we're actually looking at musical attention and those are those are two different constructs however there was a significant proportion of the variance that was that was explained um, between the two um, that was accounted for by the two measures. So we can say that at least in part, our uh, measure is looking at, to some extent at um, auditory attention. Um, so we did make some revisions to uh, MASA. And that's how we developed MASA R. Um, some of the changes that we made, uh, we changed the um, the way that a child responds to the musical stimuli. So in Massa, we originally had a child um, uh, actually pick up a, a pretend cookie and put it in a pretend cookie jar. Uh, that was the original um, form of uh, item number one. We found that it was really difficult for children to kind of manipulate the, the pretend cookies and put it in the cookie jar. And so that would often result in them delaying or the inability to put put it in when the when Cookie Monster was saying or singing the word cookie. So we revised it uh, so that the child simply touches the cookie, which is the video that you saw before. Um, and then for item number two, we had um, children holding up puppets. And uh, every time the uh, Aladdin would sing, they would hold up the Aladdin puppet. Every time Jasmine would sing, they would hold up the Jasmine puppet. Um, but we found that, um, again, it was, it wasn't discrete enough behavior to be able to observe uh, between different observers. So inner observer agreement was, was not very high. Um, so we changed that response to simply pointing at a picture of Aladdin when he sings and pointing at a picture of Jasmine uh, when, when she sings. That turned it into much more discrete response that was much easier to record. Um, and that, um, that helped with uh, some of the, the psychometrics. So when we explored reliability for Massa R, um, we saw that both um, test retest and inner observer agreement were greatly um, improved because of the change that we made uh, to how children were responding um, to the, the, the musical stimuli. Again, we um, explored the, the construct validity using convergent evidence, again, administering Massa R, with a couple of child neuropsychological test subtests, both looking at auditory attention. And again, we saw very similar results to the previous study um, saying that uh, Massa R is measuring a construct that is similar to, although not identical to auditory uh, attention. Some considerations. Um, there is no specialized training required uh, to administer MASA R. Um, however, we would expect that the music therapist who is using this has some familiarization um, and competency with clinical assessment. Um, and so a competency with clinical assessment is not is 
is more than simply being able to follow a list of instructions or directions or a protocol, but it also has to do with um, building rapport, um, being able to administer um, a, a test in a consistent yet uh, clinically flexible uh, way, um, and which is the training that uh, would go along with becoming a board certified music therapist, at least in the United States. Um, the current format is static. I mean, there's only two, uh, two songs that are used, um, and they both come from a Western dominant culture um, uh, background. Um, and so there are limitations and maybe um, who this might be appropriate for. Uh, we do need further study. Uh, we will need to have it with a clinical population as opposed to just the two uh, elementary school uh, cohorts that we did in our, our, uh, our two validation studies we've done at this point. Um, and we need to ask these research questions. Um, is the protocol feasible and does it yield similar results to the most recent MASA R studies for technical adequacy? Meaning if we go into a pediatric setting and we administer this, do we get similar results uh, to what we received when we were doing our field testing? But probably more important than this um, has to do with whether or not MASA R is helpful or useful or um, can uh, scores on MASA R predict whether or not a child is going to be benefiting more from a procedural support intervention that relies heavily on, uh, on attention compared to maybe a child who struggles more with attention, do they not do as well or do they, um, do they respond differently to procedural support intervention um, that relies heavily on um, that relies heavily on, on attention. So the idea is to what extent do scores on MASA R, these are raw scores. So to what extent do scores on MASA R predict procedural support success? That is, does the measure differentiate between those who will benefit from music as alternate engagement and those who do not? The original version of MASA um, is available in this publication, uh, Music Therapy in Pediatric Medicine, um, uh, published by the American Music Therapy Association. Um, but the updated version of MASA is MASA R has not been published. And uh, so anyone who would like to have access to those materials, um, they can contact me uh, at E-W-A-L-D-O-N at pacific.edu. Thank you for watching.